Hello everyone, it's Jackie back again. After I did my video yesterday where I showed a quick demonstration of how I work with watercolour pencils and Faber-Castell connector pens in colouring books, I thought that I might show you a book that I'm currently working in and um, show you the results that I'm getting with the Faber-Castell connector pens, but also some of the um, downfalls that you may find working in the manner that I'm describing and show you in a book so that you can make the decision yourself whether you'd like to have a go at working that way. This is RJ Hampson's new release, Around the World. If you are a follower of mine on Instagram, you'd know that I'd absolutely love RJ Hampson's illustration style. I have all of his books. Um, I like the format of his books, how he has the second set of images and recent, more recently he started to change the second image with some slight changes so that you can um, look for those differences and then colour that page differently again. Uh, so I will just show you this book um, very quickly but I want to talk to you about the methods that I use and show you just what happens to the book when you do those things. So RJ Hampson has a book belongs to page in the beginning of every book. He also has a page with information, all the publishing information and a little bit about the theme of the book. And he also has some tips and ideas of how you might like to use the book. I don't normally do this, um, I don't, have a lot of whips as a rule. I tend to start a page and finish it. And I also don't plan pages. I tend to just dive in and go with whatever happens. I just had a few green pens in my hand the other day while I had the book on my lap and thought that I just would put a little bit of color down on a few pages and um, one of the green pens was starting to run out a little bit so I just thought I'd see how far it would go. I don't intend to have any of these pages um, matching. I don't intend to have any continuity of how Mr Fogarty looks or his clothing or anything like that. I will just go and colour that page when the time comes and I'll colour it how I feel like it. But what I wanted to show you is that um, the Faber-Castell connector pens do in fact bleed quite a bit depending on the paper. And if you don't know what a connector pen is, I, I don't know if they're available worldwide, um, they're basically a water-based marker. Some countries they might be known as a felt tip marker or a fibre tip marker. Um, as a child growing up in Australia, we used to call them textures, but it's a student grade or budget marker, water-based ink, and it's got quite, quite a small nib. I don't know if that's showing up very well. Um, <clears throat> and they're very cheap and cheerful. They're easily to get hold of here and they're called a connector pen because their lids do snap together and uh, make it quite easy for storage. It's also very handy for when you've got colours out for a page you're working on and you can just click them together and keep them together. So the nibs can tear up the paper. Uh, some nibs seem to be a bit uh, smoother or softer than others, and that's just a luck of the draw thing that I've found. But they do bleed through quite a bit. And if this was a double-sided book, I would work very differently than what I am in this book. Being single-sided, I am working quite freely and quite rough. I'm very heavy-handed with my materials, and I like to colour heavily, um, I like to use a lot of water and I'm generally just quite heavy handed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now RJ Hampson's books will have the design on the right hand side 
On the left hand side he has a small design there, a name for the page and sometimes he will have text. In this case he has a bit of a story that follows through. <coughs> So this is the uh, second page. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry if you can hear that. So I used Derwent Intense Pencils on this page and then coloured pencil over the top with some metallic gel pen. At the moment, I'm using a lot of Secura Jelly Roll metallic gel pens. I didn't have a lot of bleed through. There's some shadowing and slight bleed through there, but. You can see that it's very crinkly. It makes the paper go very wrinkly and noisy. But I, I just happen to like that, so it doesn't bother me at all. This page was watercolour pencils. It was Rembrandt, uh, Lyra Rembrandt Aquarels that I bought open stock to just try a couple. And then I've used coloured pencil over the top. Again, no real bleed through, but it's very crinkly and wrinkly. Now this page is where it starts to go a bit different because I did use the connector pens as a base and then I use lots of water over the connector pen. I wait for it to dry and then go back in with the connector pen again and I'll do that until I get to a point where I just feel I can do no more with those pens. And then I'll get some pencils and I'll put a little bit of highlight in or shadow. I don't tend to like to use the very dark colours in the connector pens. Um, I you know, tend to stick more to the mid-range and the lighter colours, but uh, if I have used a darker colour and it's too dark, I can put pencil over the top and, and reinstate a bit of a highlight and uh, get some you know, depth of tone and different shades there. Now, one of the reasons I like to use the water <coughs> is that you can achieve a bit of a watercolour effect with the connector pens, which is a bit hit and miss because not all colours seem to react the same way. And the only thing to do really is experiment and just see how each colour reacts. Um, some dilute better than others, some separate, some don't. Um, but I tend to just go with that hit and miss nature and then work with whatever happens. But you'll see that because I have used those pens with water, I have a lot of bleed through on this page. And that's probably quite standard for the connector pens in particular with water. You can see that there's quite a bit of bleed through there. Now this page here, I've, I've had even more because here I worked with the connector pens and I used two colours and were blending the two colours on the page directly, um, wet into wet style. And I, you know, I was quite rough with it and quite heavy handed with it. And then when, once that had dried, I then used water over the top of it waited for it to dry again and then came back again and put more connector pen on top. And that's a really nice, deep, vibrant colour and I'm really happy with that. But this is what it looks like on the other side. And that's about as bad as it will get with the bleed through. I've almost got that to the point where I've put holes in the paper, I think. So um, if you'd like to have a go at working with the, the pens like I do or a water-based marker like I do, be prepared that that might happen. So test it out first on a page that um, you're not too bothered about if you ruin it um, or if there are some test pages at the back. But I really like how this vibrant deep colour has come out. Something else that I would like to talk about um, is, you know, we quite often want to get very, very highly blended colours and a very smooth effect with our coloured pencil. Personally, I'm not too fussed about that. I like a little bit of the texture to show. And... Um, you know, for example, I've tried to show that this isn't a completely smooth armchair. 
you don't see all of that until I bring it up really close. When I have a, a, the book at a you know, reasonable distance away, all you're seeing is change of tone, depth of colour. You're not actually seeing all of this um, you know, stuff that I'm doing here and the, and the damage that I'm doing to the paper until you bring it up really close. But personally, I like all that. That is the, a, an illustration style that I like. I like to see the mark making. I like to see the texture. I like to see how somebody has actually used the paint or pencil or pastel or whatever. And again, that is personal choice. Um, there's no right or wrong way. There's no way you should do it. Um, this is a colouring book and it's primarily for us you know, the person that owns the book. And so um, don't be afraid to try different things and accept that for what it is when it happens. And it's not a failure if it isn't a highly polished piece of colouring at the end of it. Um, I see a lot of people who are hard on themselves if they feel like the page isn't, um, you know, perfect. And I just don't think any of them are perfect, to be honest. Um, this page shows you how the connector pen has uh, separated and pulled and bled, kind of like watercolour does. And that's why I like working in this way. I like to mimic that watercolour look. Um, you may be able to see here is an example of how I am so rough that I have peeled the paper here. And as you can see, there's little bits of paper coming away. Um, <clears throat> that doesn't bother me because when the paper is like that, I can actually get the coloured pencil to grip a little bit better. And also it gives a bit of extra texture to it. Um, it, it you know, again, it's personal preference. I used to do a lot of art classes many years ago. And when I was drawing and, and painting with watercolour, I used to try and get a highly realistic look. And, you know, it became a bit fruitless and pointless because I could never quite achieve the highly polished look that I wanted. I wanted it to look like a photograph. And in the end, I came to the realisation, if I want that look, I should just take a photograph. And when it came to colouring and drawing and painting, I decided that I really like all these varied effects. I like the randomness of it and the uncontrolled nature of it and started to learn to become friends with that and how to um, use some of those effects uh, to the best advantage. So I just wanted to share that because I know that some people get really caught up in that they have to have their pages looking a certain way or anything else is a bit of a failure but we learn from everything we do and um, we either can replicate that or look for new ways to avoid it. So this is the page that I'm currently up to. It isn't uh, quite finished yet. I still have a bit of work to do on it. Um, I'm not 100% happy with how the water is looking yet, but um, you know, it'll get there. Again, when I look through my um, screen here, the water doesn't look that bad, but when I bring it up, you might be able to see, yeah, not so great. There's stuff going on there that's probably not ideal, but hey ho, we'll work with it, we'll go with it. So um, from this point on, it's the pages where I've added a little bit of green and you can see uh, little loose bits of paper where I have um, absolutely torn up the surface of the paper with my uh, connector pens. Again, I have no issue with that. I'm quite happy with that. It's not bothering me in the least. So I'll just give you a quick look at the pages. I know there are flip throughs of this book on the internet already, but um, you'll see that, you know, these pages, I have just put these little pops of colour in here so far. And uh, I'll worry about what I'm actually going to do with that page when I get to it. And even then I start the page and I don't have a plan in mind. So just go with it as it happens. Now this book is um, interesting in that RJ has started to introduce some different animals into it. 
Uh, I'll just point out a few things that I like about his style. I like these circular designs where part of the um, picture comes out or spills out over the, um, the boundary of that design. I don't know why, I just find that really visually appealing. And he has a lot of um, sort of uh, repeated um, shapes, I guess, where we'll have this, the, you know, the circular design with a bit that has escaped, circular design on its own, um, lots of arches or full-sized images. Um, and that's what I like about his books. They're all, all that little bit different in the layout uh, or each page is different in the layout. And uh, if you feel like doing a full page, you can have a full page. If you feel like you need a quick design, you know, there's, there, there'll be pages like this where it's a circular design and not overly busy. There's a, a lot of variety in the actual layouts. Here's a full, full page layout and very detailed and very busy so again another circular design that circle with you know part of the design coming out So there are 25 designs in each section of the book. I'm getting to the end now. Mr. Fogarty is home again. So that's the end of the first section. And then the second section has some small changes in the designs. Um, he'll either add something in or take something out and the background is darker. This is something that has uh, been appearing in the later books and I really like that the design is essentially the same but there are some changes so that you can colour it completely differently. So my plan is to colour this section of the book from front to back in order and um, if you're interested in actually seeing me uh, colour a page um, please let me know in the comments and I'll have a think about how I might be able to video that for me for you I am new to this um, you know so please bear with me while I fumble about and try to find the best way to uh, show you what I'm doing and lighting and all those sorts of things so I hope that has been useful I think it's really important that people realize just how much damage I do to books. Um, it's really easy on Instagram to see that cropped finished image and just think, oh gee, you, you know, you're gonna have a really lovely book when you finish there. But um, I am going to have lots of pages that look like this. And I know that bothers some people. I know that some people prefer to have the uh, nice clean page facing with their lovely coloured de design, and that's perfectly okay as well. There are some books that I would like that to happen, but it really does. So um, I hope that is helpful. <laughs> I'm really messy. I end up having little dirty marks and I drop pens and, you know, things like that happen all the time. But um, I'm really not too precious about these things. I have a photograph of each page that I put onto Instagram so that I can remember that. And then when this book is finished, it will no doubt get closed up and put on the bookshelf and I, I might not ever look at it again. Or, you know, nobody else is probably going to look at it again. So, that, you know, those things don't bother me uh, greatly. So I hope that um, gives you something to think about and perhaps give you the confidence to try using your supplies in a different way, mix things up, have a play, um, you know, go into, go into colouring something just for the fun of colouring without worrying too much about the end result and um, just accepting what happens and... and thinking about what it is you like and don't like so that you can either replicate it 
or find a new way to avoid it. And uh, I guess the message for, for me that I would like to share with you is that this hobby should be about having fun. And if something doesn't work out how we expect it's going to work out, that's okay. It's, it's a colouring book, it's paper. And um, quite often I'll, I'll do something and not really like it too much. But when I flick through the book later and come back to it when there's been a bit of time and space in between, I realised that it really wasn't as bad as what I was thinking it was anyway. So I will say goodbye for now. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for spending the time with me. And if you have any questions, um, pop them in the comments and uh, I'll do my best to answer them for you. Bye for now.